chose them. So that even when things are about to go very, very wrong, they know they have been embraced by a divine purpose larger than their own individual power of choice. For this community of friends, they were going to need that assurance so that they could stay steadfast in what was to come. So for us living in a culture today that David Brooks calls the big me, it encourages us to see ourselves as the centers of the universe, and it celebrates self-autonomy and choice. Can Jesus' words to his own friends help call us back to an awareness of God's desire to seek us out, to gather us in community, and send us into the world to stand steadfast for what is before us, just like the disciples did in their time. This Mother's Day, no one needs God's love and attention and support as much as those who live with the daily fear of losing their children to illness, suicide, and violence. I'm especially mindful of the day of the mothers, Barry Ferguson, Trayvon Martin, Freddie Gray, and others, who, as one of their mothers said, she has a hole in her heart. And they're pleading with us to remember their sons. They're asking us to stand up for their children by raising our voices and protesting in peace. As the mother of three white sons, I cannot deny the fact that in our society, white children are valued more than children of color. It's heartbreaking to know that I have friends who live as close as Bridgeport and who told me that they're afraid that their families are being watched. They're even more afraid now to take walks in the evenings after dinner. I'd like us to take a moment and pray for all those mothers who worry that their children will be caught in the line of gunfire, who fear that their children will become the victims of gang violence or police brutality, who worry for their children to serve in the military or our police officers, who send their sons and daughters on dangerous journeys across borders and seas to spare them the fate of violence in their own communities and their countries, whose children are trapped in the criminal justice system, who despair that life could be better, and who have already lost children to violence and war. As people of faith, God calls us to examine our lives in the light of our Christian hope and love. To quote Brooks again from his new book, The Road to Character, all of us are put in circumstances that call out for action, whether they involve poverty, racial injustice, needs in our families, or the opportunity to communicate some message. Life's never about the cards that we are dealt and over which we have no control. Rather, it's about how we respond to those circumstances. And each and every one of us is a priceless gift in the eyes of God. And it's sad to think that there are some that are not treated that way. When we consider the complexities in our, of life in our world today, Jesus' words can help to give us a hopeful vision of how we can live our lives with the kind of love He offers us. Like a shepherd and a sheep, like a mother hen and her chicks, like a loving parent and a child. These are visions that will answer Jesus' hopes and prayers for us as well. In the first letter of John, which we also heard this morning, the writer centers on Christ and uses a parent child analogy to talk about love. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. These would have been comforting words in the early days of the church, which was experiencing persecution and violence like so many do in our world today. And we have to remember that those words came in the context of that time. So in the context of our time, and for a moment, I'd like us to consider the pain Jesus is 
wearing beautiful white robes and floating on a cloud. With a gentle smile and arms outstretched in that come to me gesture, every hair is in place on his head and his chin. There are no visible wounds or dirt on his hands and feet. In this picture, he sits comfortably on that cloud, just as our church building sits comfortably on this lawn at the corner of center and Peapod. The images of Jesus and of our church are comforting and inviting. For those seeking safety and solace, these images will help some meet those expectations. But what if we consider Jesus' arms not just as a common to type gesture or invitation, but rather, what if we already know the safety of that path and of being in those loving arms? What if he has just picked us up and placed us on the floor like children, encouraging us to go exploring, choosing some new ministry toys, such as a new prayer practice, a daily rule of life, a commitment to a person in need, joining a cause and protesting and Using parts of the books of common prayer and hymnals that we've never opened to before. I think it is the idea. What might we discover and how might they equip us further in our ministry with new lives and voices, as well as help to hold the old ones a little bit more lightly? As I preached this last Sunday, as your associate, I believe. Every act of love given by God will take us where we need to go. And when we abide in God's love, we will delight, prayer, thankfulness, reconciliation, and sacrificial service. Any toys we choose are going to help us be in solidarity with all people and help repair God's kingdom on earth. As Brooks writes with great wisdom, in a fallen world, it is often the tainted people who help you do the most good. The founder of Mount Holyoke College once said, Do what nobody else wants to do, and go where nobody else wants to go. That's exactly what Jesus did, it's exactly what his disciples did, and that's exactly what we are supposed to do. So let's look at that painting of Jesus one more time. There indeed is God in Christ, who is both divine and human, and to whom all our lives matter. In what is called the poetics of the impossible, God gives us what has already been given. And God cannot rest until we are held once again in God's embrace. So in this painting, see Christ looking at you now saying, go, my beloved, and bring to completion the blessed work I've given you, to make creation swarm with light, for as he coming writes, with love more thicker than forget, more thinner than recall, more seldom than a wave is wet, more frequent than to fail. Our love has no limits, because God's love has no limits, and we abide in that love. So let's go. Let's keep offering that endless love to the world and to one another. I love you all so much. And thank you for the endless ways you share God's love with me. May you continue to go forward.